All right, we're gonna write an equation in slope-intercept form that is parallel to this and goes through negative three, five. So parallel to this means that we're gonna be using this slope, okay? So two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. So we're gonna make sure that our new equation has that slope. So y equals two x plus b, okay? So now we have the same slope, but now we have to figure out b because I have to write it in slope intercept form and I need the intercept. So we're gonna plug in this x and this y into the equation to figure out b. Mr. Cassius, what are you, when are you gonna use this for again? I'm not, I don't care about that. All I wanna know is the slope, okay? A lot of you are like really worried about this extra number here. So now I'm gonna plug these numbers in. So the five goes where the y is. Two, negative three, plus b. Now these are gonna multiply, you're gonna get five equals negative six plus b. You have to get rid of the six, add six to both sides, and 11 equals b. All right, so now that you know that 11 equals b and you know the slope, the equation is y equals two x plus 11. All right? So now let's scoot this up and out of the way. Let's focus on this that's right here. So now we're looking for something perpendicular. Parallel have the same slope, so they go up at the exact same rate. Perpendicular intersect at 90 degrees, so it's a very specific slope that it has to have, okay? So a perpendicular slope is not only the reciprocal, but it's also the opposite sign. So it's a complete opposite number. So here, we want it perpendicular to this. So this slope has to flip. Mr. Kasper, how's it gonna flip? Well, a three is actually three over one. So if you flip it, you're gonna end up with one over three. And it has to be a different sign because if your slope is going this way and I have to intersect it at 90 degrees, then mine's gonna be negative. So there we go, all right? That's our slope. So now that I have my slope, I know that the equation looks like this negative one-third x plus b. Mr. Krasers, again, what do we do with this five? Nothing. You're gonna do nothing with that five. You're just using the slope, and that helped me find the perpendicular slope, which is this one right here. Now, we're gonna plug this number in, so the y goes over here, negative one-third times negative three plus b, and then this is gonna multiply and you're gonna get four equals one plus b. Then you're gonna subtract one on both sides, minus one, minus one, this cancels. This leaves me with three equals b. And now you know what b is. You know what the slope is, and you know what b is. You can write the slope intercept form. y equals negative one-third x plus three. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna scroll this down. Now we're gonna do inverse. I know you were expecting me to do scatter plots, but I've never done a video for scatter plots and I will not begin this year. Scatter plots are too simple to go over. Now, inverse. So these are the originals and I wanna find the inverse. Inverse means that X and Y are going to switch places. So all the answers for X and Y are gonna switch places, which means that the answer to the inverse of these relations is gonna be negative 10, four, okay? Then it's gonna be negative 19, seven. You see how I'm not changing the sign? I'm just literally changing this one into this one. So just switching spots. So that's gonna be 17, negative five, and 11, negative three. And that's it for that, okay? X and Y, inverse means that X and Y are sw switching locations. So what about this one? So normally graphs aren't marked like this, but because I didn't have lines, I had to do it like this. So you find two lines, two dots that are on the line, okay? And you find what their coordinates are. So this one's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. So this is gonna be zero, four. And this one here is gonna be 2, 0. So it's going to be 2, 0. 
okay? To find the inverse line of this, all I need to find is two dots, okay? Find their inverse and then plot those dots. So I found two dots on this line, okay? On this line right here. They're not always gonna be the x-intercept and the y-intercept, but in this situation they were. So now I'm gonna find the inverse of these. So the inverse of this is four, zero. And the inverse of this one is zero, two. So I'm gonna find four, zero, which is right here. I'm gonna find zero, two, which is right here. And then if I connect them, that line is the inverse of the other line. Okay? They're the inverse of each other. Lines, inverse lines will only intersect in this quadrant or in quadrant three. All right, so let's find the inverse of this equation. What does that mean? You have to switch x and y. So just to start off, let's switch the f of x into y. It's the very same thing. Okay? Now we're going to change uh, x and y. We're going to switch their places. So now x is going to be here. And y is going to be here. So that's the inverse. But I want the equation of the inverse. So we have to leave y by itself. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. Okay? That gets rid of the 8. So now we're left with x plus 8, because you can't put them together, equals 4y. Then we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. My solution is going to be this divided by 4 is 1 fourth x plus 8 divided by 4 is 2 equals y. This is the inverse of the original. Okay? It is the inverse of the original. So now I'm going to write it here. I can't write f of x. Okay? Because that one's f of x. So I have to show them that this is the inverse. So the symbol is a negative 1 right here as an exponent for the f. This tells everybody that that was the original and this is the inverse, okay? And now we get rid of that pesky y, and this is our final solution, okay? I have another one over here. Again, we're switching out that. Now we're going to replace x and y with each other, so now this is going to be x over here and y over here. So that's going to be 3y plus 2 divided by 2. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this. Now we're left with 2x equals 3y plus 2. Then I'm going to subtract 2. So now it's 2x minus 2 equals 3y. Then we can divide by 3, divide by 3. You could leave it like this, but I would write 2 over 3x minus 2 over 3. All right, and now that we have the final answer, I'll do my, hey, this is the inverse over here. And we are done. Good luck.